what do you find is the best way to differential diagnosis with musculoskeletal conditions, one with the ortho exams and just general ana- understanding of the anatomy? What, do you, what have you found has been the best way to, to kind of tease that out and learn that? Repetition, repetition, repetition. So aside from obviously just continually doing it over and over and over again, uh, what I found beneficial is from different points of view. So whether that means going to a different training or a different course uh, where you can learn uh, some form of diagnostic ability from a different lens. So for example, uh, I'm a huge fan of, of Kelly Sturrett uh, and have been for the past 10 years. And uh, for those of you who don't know, he's a physical therapist based out of California who started Mobility Wad, which then became, it's now called the Ready State. Um, but I did one of his um, kind of assessment and treatment courses, shoot, back in like 2014, I think it was. And just seeing things from a different uh, light helped me to think about movement and dysfunction and physical exams and orthopedic exams slightly differently. And so so that, that can be one strategy. And then the other strategy is uh, trying to reflect on uh, your orthopedic exams after you've done a treatment. So for example, when you do a treatment on a patient, it doesn't matter what the treatment is, you know, uh, generally we're thinking more in terms of the Uh, injection-based or physical medicine-based approaches is if you do a, uh, you have an orthopedic exam that you do and then you perform an injection and then at six-week follow-up you repeat that physical exam, you can then tease out, okay, what's different? And it's important to know what's different to know if your patient's getting better, but then you'll start to be able to differentiate in your mind what what is different and why is it different? Okay, we have this patient who uh, they have low back pain and we suspected sacroiliitis. And we went and did a clunial nerve injection as an example. We did perineural for the clunial nerves. And this part of the exam got better and their pain got better. This part of the exam didn't get better. And so what does that, what does that mean? So you can step back and try to evaluate that. As an example, uh, last week at Roosevelt, we had a patient who uh, we weren't sure if it was a clunial neuropathy that she had or a uh, sacroiliitis because there was kind of features of both showing up on her physical exam and in her history. And so, and one of the things was she only had one out of five on the cluster for SI, and that was Gainsland's. And Gainsland's recreated her pain. And I'm generally on the camp of, hey, if something recreates the pain, that's, that's really, really important. We have to pay attention to that but also palpating over the SI joint in the clunial nerve region recreated her pain. And so we said, okay, well, it could be one, it could be both. Let's trial doing a perineural injection over the clunial nerves, and then let's repeat Gainsland's at the end of the day, not wait two weeks for them to come back. Let's do the uh, treatment and then repeat Gainsland's. And Gainsland's was negative. So the pain went away after doing perineural. And so that taught the student that, hey, you can sometimes have a physical exam that shows up positive, but it might not be what it's actually showing. It might be for something else. And hey, you treated this other thing, the clunial nerves, which can overlap with uh, sacroiliitis, and then they saw an improvement in that. And so that's, I think, a way to help further solidify the physical exam and orthopedic component because it, it allows you, it's the test retest theory. You, you test it, you do something in intervention, and you retest, and, and you look at what changed, and that can help solidify your own mental model.